first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pioneer man in which I produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was... Peace. Hey, back once again with Dr. Aline Bay. First World Order Radio is in full effect. No doubt. I'm getting ready to bring on the co-host, my man, Grand Sheik, Fahim R.L. Peace, God. Peace. How you doing tonight, Doc? Very well. Very well, God. How you doing tonight? Doing well. That's good. All right. Good. Wonderful. All right. We're going to get into um, basically indigenous redemption. And the reason why we're dealing with this subject because it's a continuation of information on which that we've been laying out. And we want to go more into the term more and has it and how it has its ancient roots in the letters M R, which is the M is an owl and the R is the mouth of Ra called Ru. All right, hmm. it was found, in, found on the walls in ancient Kemet. As a matter of fact, there was a book written, Egyptian hieroglyphics, by um, E.A. Wallace Budge, in which that he breaks that information down. E.A. Wallace Budge, he breaks that information down in which that is dealing with um, the term more, M-A-U-R-S, and how they were the high priests. Now, this has been found on the still that they are the high priests of the order of Anu, which is on, which is another name for Ra. Mm-hmm. All right, so the word more is tied back once again to Ra, and the symbol is an owl. This is why the symbol of an owl is on the back of the dollar is on the front of the dollar bill in the upper left-hand corner, um, in the upper right-hand corner on the left-hand side of the of the dollar, of the one. You will see the hour there peeking out. And when you flip it over directly behind that owl is the pyramid itself in which that symbol is an eye. Now, I'm just going to tell you that the word more 
or the letters MR because remember there was no consonants in the metroneta. So when you're dealing with Elastic. When you're dealing with words, um, like for example, um, the word "kimmy" has come to be has come to mean black land or black people's land, um, but it's not the ancient word for Egypt, mm-hmm. all right? Now, to get E. A. Wallace Budge's book, The Egyptian Hieroglyphic Dictionary, um, is volume one, if I'm not mistaken, around page three fifteen. And if you look up the word more, um, I think it's in volume two, around page 1050, somewhere around there, you'll find that the Moors or the land of the Moors, which you get the word Tamorian or Tamarian, is the hidden and true nationality of the real ancient Egyptians. All right. They was also referred to as the Kamau or Kamau. K A M A U, all right, um, or Cam, you know. So the word Kemet is the geographical name, you know, where the praiseworthy black dirt settled. Um, this is where we get the word Muhammad, uh, which means one who is worthy of praise, and those mm-hmm. who raise up or praise up out of into the um, um, out of. And end of the darkness, you know what I'm saying? Um, they come out of the darkness, and which means into the light, and which that symbolizes ignorance in that particular regard. So when you look at the word um, more, you'll find something real fascinating because it is also tied to being that is Ra, and Ra is nothing more than another form of Asar. All right. Um, This is why in the Old Testament you have Ia Ashar Ia, which means within Hebrew, I am that which that I am. Yeah. All right. So in the Old Testament, you know, Asir or Asar is the mysterious, unpronounced name of the Lord, which Moses was talking to, you know, and it's not Jehovah or Yahweh. Once again, is Ia Asher Ia, or I am or saw, which is I am actually Osiris. I am. I am or saw I am. All right? That's basically what that means. And you can see um, if you get the Torah by the Union of the American Hebrew Congregation, um, I think it's around page um, 400. Um <laughs> They break that information down in Exodus 3.14. All right? And then when you look up Osiris from the Greek word, because we know that the original Greeks, according to J. Rogers, Sex and Race, Volume 1, and the Missing Pages of History by Indo Kush, as well as also um, what they never told you in history class, was all books in which that state that the Greeks, the original Greeks, were blacks or moors. As a matter of fact, um, the name for us within the Greek language was called moros, M-A-U-R-O-S, moros, which is taken from the word moors, M-A-U-R-S, from E.A. Wallace Budge's um, transliteration, which is his Egyptian um, hieroglyphic dictionary, who were the high priests of Anu. So it's all one and the same. So here it is, hundreds and, you know, thousands of years before the Moors of Spain, the word was used already in the Greek culture, already used in the Egyptian or the ancient Egyptian culture, known as the Tamarians or the Tamarians or, you know, or Kamau, you know. Uh, So we know based on that information when you look up Osiris in Greek um, Oz you know which means plus or Irish and when translated properly means bones and mouth you know this is what brother Taj is talking about when he said that the word Muslim means um, bones, flesh, muscle tissue 
This is what he's really talking about. He's talking about Osiris or Osa, because there's also the messenger's eye. And in that form, um, the messenger of God, who actually became the word that spoke the foundation of the world into existence. That's what Osiris or Oz, Iris actually symbolizes. It. It's Oz, in which that also means um, bones, you know what I'm saying, and mouth, which is Oz. And Iris, which symbolizes the messenger's eye or I. So we're talking about the bones, mouth, eye. We're talking about the word made flesh. That's what it's really speaking of. And you can get this information from the shorter Oxford English Dictionary by um, um, William Little. William Little. All right. Now, it's no coincidence that Osiris, which is Osir or Osar or Osaru, is also called Bay. All right. They spelled the B A I, Bay, which is the same as B E Y as we pronounce it. And it means noble or priest. You know what I'm saying? And it's a form of Osa or Ra. So when the Moorish Empire, the Mexican Empire, the Washita Empire ruled the world, all the Baylis, all right, which is spelled B A I, were actually bailiffs, B E Y. Right? So B A L B A I L I F F S was actually spelled B E Y L I F F S. The term bay became bay as in I'm sitting on the dock of the bay and by was spelled B A I. Right? And you can get this information from the ancient history of the distinguished surname Bay by the Historical Research Society of Orlando, Florida. Now, they say that these bays, check this out now, pioneered, right? They was the pioneers, became the nucleus of the first settlement from Spain to the Colombian or to the um, Cumberland Gap. All right, which is down um, beyond um, Kentucky, Arkansas area. And it says that they provided much of the stock that produced the early presidents and governors of the United States. In Canada, they settled Nova Scotia, the St. Lawrence, and Ottawa Valley. It says the family name Bay provided many predominant Contemporaries such as colonial or colonel, excuse me, um, Bay, who created the Video Channel and founded Ottawa. It says Bay in Old English or Moorish English for Yiddish or Yingish originally meant governor or prince, all right, or bag. Or big, which means great, right? So when we look at the word bay, we understand that that's one of the five names connected to the five civilized tribes. So you have bay, day, al, il, ali, right? Il is also pronounced l. All right, and those names correlates to the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, which is the Washita, the Seminole, which is the Yamasee, the Cherokee, and the Creek, which is the Muskogee. All right, those was known as the five civilized tribes. All right, mm. now. The word more is the actual word found in the petroglyph on Mount Moriah, right? For the scholarly word Hebrew, the original Amors refer to themselves as Moru, M-A-R-U, 
Now, that's no coincidence because when we looked up the word in the Dictionary of American, all right? Now, remember, go back to your information. We spoke about this before. You look up the word American. It says the Aboriginal color copper natives. Mm-hmm. Here, basically, talking about here in the Americas. They was founded here. They was already here before the settlement of their territories by the Europeans. I say invasions. And this is based on um, the 1937 Webster Universal Dictionary. Look it up. It says the original application of the word American is the word Maru. Now, that's no coincidence. So, the people who was the aboriginal copper-colored natives were known as the Maroos. M-E-R-U. All right. Now, remember, there was no vowel. So M-E-R-U is actually M-A-R-U or M-O-O-R-I, all right? Or the term more also means mountain or mound or pyramid, all right? That's what it's connected to, all right? Now, when we're looking at the word America, is the origin of the moderate term America, and the word is Amaruka, Amaruka, M A M A R U K A. Yeah. Right, and it had nothing, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the made-up personage historically called Americo Vanskewski, who was the name was called the Alberto. Yeah. Who actually was named Alberto Vespusky based on what they told us in history class. Nor did Cristobal Colon, who was Christopher Columbus discovered America, or actually exists. All right. This is this is this is their um this is their reconstructed history coming into effect. The term America or Amaruka is far older than the 15th century. So it was older than 400 years ago. We've been mm-hmm. called Moors or Maroons. All right? This is not nothing new. Now, in the Time uh, magazine, they produce a copy of the oldest known map of North America. And the article states that this ancient Liberian, all right, or Libyan, excuse me, Libyan Arabic script was discovered. All right, during the first century BC, and in the center of the continent, it was in Nevada. And guess what? The word is M U more. All right, and they said that this is possibly the origin of the word America. Now, this is in Time magazine. All right, I S B N. O dash eight one two nine dash zero eight four seven dash three. Look it up. Now Barry Four, who was the um he was a professor at Harvard University and author of the Saga America, uh, which is a time book, states that America probably had nothing to do with America Van Spusky. Also, if you see um ISIS unveiled for more information, even Madame Bavaski breaks that down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, Dr. Fall indicates several pre-Columbian cultures in the Americas, in particular the West, finding rich evidence of an early Arabic presence. Now, remember I told you all the last time that our language was Arabic and Hebrew, which are kin tones. They are different dialects of the same language, which is the mother language, which is actually um, Metuneta, right? We spoke Chaldean, we spoke Arabic, we spoke Hebrew right here. This is why you'll see many of the Native American tribes 
you know, especially the Algonquins, when you go and do your research on linguistics or etymology and phonetics and how it ties back to these particular so-called Eastern languages. But here, these Eastern languages were spoken here in the West. How is that possible? Hmm. All right. Matter of fact, um, Barry Fell further suggests that Pueblo, which is the Indian culture and North African culture, he says that they are nearly identical. He infers that a major Carthaginian, which is the Canaanites or the Phoenician Moors, traded with North and South America. Now, we know that the Phoenicians, as well as also the Egyptians, they had ships. And these ships, yeah. um, you know, have been found. In particular, um, you will see the ships if you go to the British Museum, particularly from Egypt. They found several ships in which that has been verified that they could sail across, especially if they catch that current coming from West Africa. All right? And they could have came right across the Atlantic currents. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, also in an article entitled Secret Societies in the Ancient Americas, it states ancient Masonic lodges has been discovered amongst the American Indians who will know who actually are the Native Americans, who is i.e. the Moors, which he called an ancient Indian Masonic lodge at an Anazi. Indian archaeological site, 80% identical to the Masonic lodges in America now. So that means that masonry was already practiced here because remember the word Freemason coming from man, a god, civilization written by George G. Jackson, John G. Jackson. He states in there that the name, all right, that the name, pay attention now, that the name Freemason is derived from the Metronet name Freemason, which is spelled P-H-R-E-E, as in the word free, and then M-E-S-S-E-N, Mesin, which is the same as Mason, M-A-S-O-N. And he said that this is the original word. Mm. And it means a child of the light. Mm. Now, when you look up the word mesrum, misrum, which is spelled M E S R E M, you would know that the word misrum was also the word misram, which is the name which they gave to the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians in the Bible in Hebrew is called Mesram. That was the name of Egypt from the Hebrew was Mesram. The word Mesram or Misram means a child of light or the child of Ra. So the word Freemason and the word Mesram have the same meaning. This is why you find these connections in these various schools, but they won't tell you this because they'll try to keep this separate in order to keep your mind fragmented so that you won't realize the connection pieces. Right. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, remember, Barry Ford said 80% in the ancient lodges, there was 50 rocks and clay tablets, which he dated one back to 1,200 A.D., written in what appears to be Arabic. Even the name America may be produ- um, produced, produ- yeah, produce of ancient American secret society. Now, remember, this secret society, they claim, came from Francis Bacon, who was, hmm. i.e., known as William Shakespeare, right. in which that he wrote the book, The New Atlantis. In which that he tells within his book that of the escapades or the future escapades of them traveling across from out of England or out of Europe into the Americas and setting up camp here. Now, go and read the book, 
New Atlantis. Now, who was William Shakespeare? Francis Bacon. He was the founder of the Shakespearean Council. So it was not just him. It was people from Cambridge, from Oxford, from different um, high levels of society, all right, in which that he was the head of Rosicrucian, all right? And the Rosicrucian was tied to the Masons because King James was allegedly the grand master of the Grand Lodge of England. Mm-hmm. Yeah. During the 1500s, in which that he appointed, he appointed William Shakespeare slash Francis Bacon to be the editor of the King James Version of the Bible. Now, even the name America, like we said, may be the products or the produce of ancient American secret society. In an 1895 edition of a magazine called Lucifer, there was a name of a magazine published by the occult promoting the esophical society now. The word America, this is what this is what it said in the article. Now, check this out. This comes from out of Bavaski. Said that the supreme god of the Mayan culture of Central America, known as Quasicoto, elsewhere was known in Peru as Amaru. And the Amaru's territory was known as Amaru Ka. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, I'm breaking all this down because we're dealing with indigenous redemption tonight. And this yeah. is information that you need to know in order to understand how to redeem yourself. All right? Now, it says, origins say authorities believe that the Indians to be of Hebrew origin. They based this belief on the fact that the Indians was a very religious people. Also saying that the Indian tribes had Old Testament legends. Now, of course, we understand it because you go to um, the book called the Mormons, the Mormons Bible, all right, or the, um, uh, what is it, Saints of Latter-day, um, the, um, yeah, um, Latter-day Saints. Right. In their book of the Mormon's Bible, the Mormon's book, they state the same thing. That the said Indian tribes had Old Testament legends. Matter of fact, they worshiped the one great spirit, right, and never idols. The name of the deity, guess what, was Allah. Mm. A-L-A. The Hebrew name for God. Now, we know another name is Ayla, which is A-L-A-H, or translated as Elo, which is E-L-O-H. And when the many gods come together from the Elohims, which are the seven chakras, in which they have formed your physical body into existence, which is called the creative spirits or the seven souls of Ra, in which that was referred to as Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M, which means plural. I am is plural. But singular... The name is Ayla, A-L-A-H, which is the word Allah. Now, this is the same name that the native, that many of the cultures of the Algonquin still refer to, and some of the Iroquois still refer to their God as Allah. All right? Now, their form of government was very, you know, was also similar. Um, there were similarities of language, you know, um, you know, so we have to get into account, right? And once again, it is also important that Egypt, Atlantis, America's predominant population was always depicted as copper, coffee complected, and not really red as the moderate Indians or Native Americans is commonly depicted. But we was called the Aboriginal color um, copper natives. Remember the definition now from mm-hmm. Webster Universal Dictionary. Now, at this time, the term Indian should be looked at closely because the term Indian is a latter Latin word coming from Hindi, 
or sendu, meaning dark hued or transferring from the older Latin word Ethiopian. Mm. And the term Ethiopian is not of African origin. It was transferred back to the Greek word Ethiopian, all right, or um, Ethiopian, meaning dark hued, all right, or burnt, all right, sunburnt. That's what they refer to it as. Now, if you think that we bullshit with the information, Go to Jack D. Forbes, Forbes um, book. It's entitled um, Africans and Native Americans. You go to page 69. He states that in 1524, the people of the Carolina coast were said to be of dark color, not much unlike the Ethiopians. <laughs> All right, now you go to the Charlotte Observer dated... Um, Sunday, August the 15th, 1993, it states that North Carolina in 1690 reported the presence of Moors and that they are the ancestors of a people erroneously called Melungeons. Now, this goes for the people that they call the Nanocopes. Mm. This goes for the people that they call the Lenape. This goes for the people that they refer to as the Cherokee, the Chickasaw. The Creek, which is Muskogee. The Seminole, which is the Yamasee. All of them was erroneously, that's what we was erroneously called by these so-called names in order to separate us into family, clans, and tribes. Because they destabilized the empire. Because we was at one time together. Now, you don't believe that shit? Go and look up. <laughs> The Camp Holmes Treaty, or the Treaty of Camp Holmes, in which that they refer to us as the Wichita Nations. Mm. Mm. That's what the S, if you can't get that. Now, if you go to Forbes, um, Jack D. Forbes' um, book again, he says, um, when Africans are referred to in the Jesuit letters, they are always called Negro de Guine, which means blacks of Guinea, to distinguish them from Negro de Terra, which is the blacks of the land of America. Now, this is what he says. Hmm. Matter of fact, he goes further that on page, what? I think that was on page 64. Then on page 67, 71, he states that the French Nor, which is black, and the Negri, black, or a dark person. It says the French Moor or Mori Moor equivalent. Right, he said it was equivalent. No, right. No, it was equivalent. No, equivalent. Okay. Hmm. Right, he said we're equivalent to Negroes from Guinea. So they refer to the French Maori or Moors, all right, as equivalent to Negroes from Guinea. He says, thus Negroes is used for Indian and not for someone from America. In any case, it is clear that many Iberians and Italians, whether Europe or America, was comfortable using Negro, Negri, Etc. for America. For hmm. Americans. That's what it says. So they refer so the people in Europe and America, um, from um Iberia and the Italians, whether in Europe or in the Americas, refer to the so called natives, all right, as Negroes or Negri. It's just the copper coffee complected Negro D Terra are classified in Black Star Dictionary as Femi Color Le Prix, which means free color nation of people. So they recognize this in the Black Star Dictionary as being a nation. All right? It says, as a matter of fact, that name was used up to the time of the Civil War. And this 
term applied to all persons not of the white race, including Indians. Again, the word Indian originally did not mean Native American or American the way that it is used today. However, it did mean Ethiopian, Negro de Terra, which is the natives of America, and Moors. Hmm. You can look this up and see indeed in um, Cassell's New Latin Dictionary, all right, by D.P. Simpson, all right? I think that's on, like, page 299. So that's where you get these connections from. And then we know that even Columbus used the word endos, in which that the Spanish in which that he spoke, allegedly, because we don't know even if he existed or not. Right. Um, but <laughs> it is said that he used the term endos, because remember, they don't reconstruct the unconstruct, um, reconstructed history. And they tie themselves into a history and then destabilizing the empire at the same time. For they can right. have a mm-hmm. seat to raise up from. And then as they raise up, we'll, you know, come down, fall, and come to our demise. That was the whole plan. To never allow the Moors to rise again. That is said within the Masonic Shriner, white, of the so-called Pell, Albion, Albino, White, whatever you want to refer to them as, in their Masonic Shrine Dome. All right, this is what they um, state. All right. So, if you go to, um, another, I guess you say another book, you can go to, um, in which that speaks about the Native Americans. They say that the Native Americans are wards of the government. This is the second American group. Hmm. And differ greatly from the Aboriginal Americans, which is the first Americans. The term American is so vague and has totally replaced the phrase citizen of the United States. And this is no accident. And we know that because a citizen of the United States, especially when it's United States citizen, you know what I'm saying, which is a small c, shows that you are subject. Right? Shows that you are subject. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, American as used in a device, which is a contract, to be used by trustees, guardians, or wardens for the benefit of worthy, deserving, or so-called white Americans. Protestants, that means all descendants of Europe born in America, especially the inhabitants, not citizens of the United States. So, what we say that is that the term Native American refers to the second group. All right? And then we have the first group is esoterically the Moors or Moorish Negri Indians, known as the Aboriginal Americans. And then the third group is the term Indigenous American. Now, based on the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, we have the right to a nationality. All right? Mm-hmm. And because of that, there's certain things in which that has taken place to de- to um, put us in a position of being denationalized. Allegedly, that came by way of 1774. And if you read Prophet Noble Dralee's Morris literature, he makes mention of the fact that the names, our names, our nationality, birthright, etc., was taken away in 1774. And he also made mention of a constitution during the 1774. Of course, we know that constitution was the Articles of Association that was written in 1774. There was three other constitutions to be written after that, all building upon that first constitution. You had the second one, which is the Articles of Confederation. The third one, which was written in uh, 1781. And you had the Declaration of Independence, uh, written 1776. And then you have the Constitution for the United States of America, written 1789 um, through 1791. All right, so you understand that's what was taking place. All right, so the name of the patron saint in which that put this together was St. 
um, tanamine. Now, tanamine, or tanamine, remember, um, his birthday was celebrated May 1st. All right? Now, that is the time that they tell you that this person by the name of Adam Weiser supposed mm-hmm. to put together the Illuminati, 1776. But we find out that that was actually St. Tanami's birthday, which mean you know what I'm saying, which was actually the Epiphany Moors. And he mm. was a Lenape Delaware chief. All right? Or what is known as the part of the Delaware Moors. All right? The word Tanami um, is rooted in the word Tami, you know, which is the ancient Moors group. And Tami originally meant those who um, bought civilization or the civilization breakers. Tanami also means friendly and easy to approach. Now, this is no. This is the reason why William Penn went to um, Tammany in order to ask him permission in order to form what now becomes the so-called Thirteen Colonies. All right. Later on, known as the Thirteen States slash now the Fifty States of the Union. But that was based on a lease in which that was brought together by the United States and Morocco peace treaty or the treaty of peace and friendship all right and which that was written um around 1787 now if you notice that was two to four years before the constitution and its ratification of what is called the constitution for the united states of america it was before president george washington remember he did not become president until 1789 uh-huh we talking about 1787. As a matter of fact, when he was a general, he was thanking, all right, he was thanking the Moroccan emperor. All right? yeah. He was thanking the Moroccan emperor. You know, um, do you want to build on anything concerning that, brother, um, brother Fahim? Yes, uh, yes, he was thinking the the, the the emperor of Morocco at the same time. Uh, as he was uh, became the first president of the Constitution, and at uh, the thing about uh, at that period, it was the last uh, constitutional convention was ever held at that time as well, right. and thus during the Tenth Amendment. And after that, there was uh, no more constitutional conventions uh, to be held, and uh, what mm. most people don't understand is the Congress, like the House of the Senate and the House of Representatives, which make up the Congress, right. can vote on an amendment, but if a constitutional convention is not being held, it's no good. Mm. It's no good, you know, and, and uh, uh, a lot, I know a lot of the uh, people talk about the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, even the 16th Amendment, as far as taxes is concerned, are all fraudulent. Even the ninth exactly. amendment for women, uh supposed to be gave the women the right to vote. It's also right. a, a null null and void. And uh, right. uh I mean they would be really shocked if they really woke up and really found out what's really happening with those amendments. Or exactly. so called amendments. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Let's get back to William Penn, where we find the name Pennsylvania, named he was that's what it was named after the state was named after him. If you go to Ancient and Moderate Britons by David the Marici, um he states that the refers to the Aboriginals as black as the gypsies. Mm. Okay. Blacks as the gypsies. Now, who are the gypsies? The gypsies are supposedly a band of people who left from out of Egypt. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. William Penn was also referring to another tribe called the Ben Ishmaelite or the Ben Ishmael. All right. Who was known 
know as a Moorish nation on the eastern seaboard before their displacement. Now, that is connected to the Lenape, which are the Delaware Moors. Now, who also comes from out of that bloodline is a prince by the name of Ben Bayamayma Muali, who is also a judge, a master astrologer. His code name is Prince Hall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, in Africa and the discovery of America, they speak about the fact that under the mandate of the Bay of the Moors or Moroccan Empire of our forefathers, it says that the Europeans, the English, the French, the Dutch, the Danes, the Swedes, all had to pay tribute to the empire. Now, this is also within um, United States and Barbary powers, written by David Matt Ricci. All right? And he states that, um, that there was a letter written by George Washington, I think it was 12-1-1789, to the emperor of Morocco, all right, because he actually was the ninth president. George Washington was the ninth president. He was not the first president, and actually he was the seventeenth um, president. If you go back to the Articles of Confederation, and then come up to um, the Articles of Associ- and the Articles of Association, all right, and then even you add in the Declaration of Independence. If you um, go back to 1774, you will see that somebody had to be the president of the um, of the Continental Congress. Mm-hmm. Right, that's all of this was coming together. Now, George Washington apologized for not receive, for not sending the emperor the regular tribute. Mm. Now that's what the Barbary power was was about. The United States mm-hmm. of the Barbary powers. The Barbary was about the Berbers, which is the word Moors, <laughs> Ethiopian. Abyssinian, um, Abyssinian, the Kushites. Now, if you go and study the Bovain, the Bovain's collection, over 200 letters from the Continental Congress was corresponding with the Bay of Morocco. By the signing of the Moroccan, um, of the United States, of the Moroccan and United States Treaty of Peace, and friendship of 1787, that was signed by John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, uh-huh. with Tahar bin Abdelkek Bey, all right, who was the emperor of Morocco, the imperial majesty, and that was on um, the date of three six, 1789. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now another um thing we need to look at is the Treaty of Tripoli. The Treaty of Tripoli was signed in eighteen oh five by um Colonel Tobias Lear as the Consul General of the United States of America with Regency. And that was signed by um, Yusef Karlamali and Bashar and Mohammed Karlamali Bay. Mm. Once again, Bay. Now, anybody goes and do the study, you will find that it is said that Based on the Treaty of Tripoli, it says specifically that the United States was never, nor ever founded upon Christianity. Because these are Islamic principles. This is Islam on which that this is dealing with. If you want to call it a religion, remember Islamism. Prophet mm-hmm. Nobel already told you that it was the everlasting gospel. That's what they was dealing with, which is the ancient mystery school system. 
This is why they had the Masons in these parties, these orders, in these Rosicrucians. That's why they was in higher positions. Because mm-hmm. they're supposed yeah. to be studying and following the principles of Masonry. Um, brother L, can you break down some of the principles of Masonry and how a brother is opposed to act as compared to how they are acting? Yes. Uh, it says it's supposed to uh, make men better. It's supposed right. to uh, uh, teach you how to subdue your passions, meaning your lower nature, your lower self, and so you can improve yourself in masonry and improve yourself in life as well as masonry. That's what it's supposed to do. But if you uh, observe them, uh, I hate to say a lot of, uh, most of, I would say maybe 75 or 80 percent of our Prince Hall Masonic uh, brothers, uh, they deal in a lot of lewdness and drunkenness and uh, what do you say, skirt chasing, uh, just to put it mildly, uh, things of that nature, you know. Uh, if you right. ask them why certain stations are being in place of the lodge, why dealing with astrology, or uh, dealing with cosmology, uh, my logic science, uh, why why the worship master is sitting in the east, and why the senior was sitting in the west, and the junior was sitting in the south, why is it situated that way? They couldn't tell you. Right. Because they don't know nothing about the four gates. No. Right. Because they, right. they don't know astrology, cosmology. No. Even though all the hints are there within their lessons, very few of them study it. Yes. Very few of them study it. They study how to say them verbatim, word for word. You know, they're pretty good at that, you know. But dealing with the uh, uh, cosmological uh, uh, nature of it, uh, they they lost it's over their heads, and uh, uh, that is really is the true significance of learning, learning what masonry is really all about. You know, and the, the, right. they skip over the science of it and just deal with ritual rituals. You know, just rituals. Mm-hmm. And that's right. it. Right. But right, right there in Masonry, they also tell you that that Masonry is veiled in symbolism and allegory. Yes. But yet, they act like they don't know what symbols and allegory mean. No. <laughs> no. You know, allegory or symbols. No. Uh, they, uh, <clears throat> like I said before, uh, they deal with how well and how well you can do the rituals verbatim, and how well you say them verbatim, and you know that you know they hold you high esteem uh, among the order if you can do that very well. You know, but right. far as the, the uh, far as just breaking it down and esoteric, in its esoteric meaning, uh, they're not interested in that. Right. Only if you can say them verbatim, that's all they're interested in. You know, uh, the our school instruction here, uh, you only allow to, uh, let's say, go so far dealing with esoteric masonry, which is the real masonry that they should be teaching and learning and studying. But you only go to only mm. teach you maybe a teaspoon full of it. Mm. And that's sad. That's the reason why they don't know the history in order to put this information together like what we're trying to do here tonight. Right. Because this is about indigenous redemption, so we have to give you the information, the proper information, so you can actually go forth and save yourself up to fall humanity. That's what this is really all about. So when we look at the European citizen um, of the so-called United Colonies of America, they found themselves very comfortable and at ease in St. Tanami's presence while attempting to negotiate an agreement that would allow them to become an annexed part of the Aboriginal, Indigenous, Native, Moorish governments, all right, which is in the family of nations Mm -hmm. that was, and I believe, is the head of the law, which was actually um, 
the remnants of the Ultima Empire, who was actually was Osmalian or Asmanly, right, or Osmanly Bay's Empire. All right. Uh-huh. He's one of the latter rulers of the empire, which actually is the Ultima Empire. All right. All this connected because you go to the Dictionary of the American Indian by um, John Schutenberg Jr. He has that information in there. So what is this Osmali Bay's empire or the Ultima uh-huh. Empire? That is the Omec Empire. That is the Omec civilization of Central America. This is the reason why they've been trying to hide it because they didn't want us to put these pieces of this puzzle together. Who are uh-huh. the Omex? They are the Omexums, which are the rulers of the last empire or the last Western Empire. The Omexan, all right, or the Omecan civilization of Central America is considered by most scholars to be the oldest and high culture in America. The word Mexico came from the word Omec and code. Check this out. And the coded Moorish word a maxim. Uh, this word is a verb, which means place of the mixing and not a name. Most scholars deduce that the word from Ali, which means rubber people, however, it would be better translated Oli, which is Ali, which is Hebrew, which means exalted ones, and the people uh-huh. who bounce back. Right. Wow. Now that is the you know, so that's actually that's why um the Omex, you know what I'm saying, or Oli, you get the word Ali, which means the exalted ones or the most high. All right. All right. Now the term Omec was mesoterically understood means Almac, son of or belonging to Allah or Elamak, which means come from Mecca or Meccans. So one of the oldest meanings of Mecca, which is Baka, which means Ba and Ka, spirit. Or ba means soul, Ka means spirit, which is what? The Kaaba um, area there within Mecca, which means the Moors, once again. And it says the ori- the original Meccans, which the old Meccans, were the family of Imran. And in the Quran by A. Yusuf Ali, it speaks about them in the, um, chapter 3. And it says Allah did choose a, um, Adam, Noah, the family of Abraham, and the family of Imran above all people. Now, when you look up the word Imran, you'll find that that name is connected to Amin Ra. And you will find also Atan. And the component or the individual who put forth, who um, moved Amin Ra, and actually wasn't the moving, it was the understanding that Amin Ra symbolizes our son here, but there was a son greater and larger than our son, which was in the central or in the center of our galaxy called Alcyon, but during that time, they called it Atan, all right, hmm. Atan, which became the word Hebrew, Adonai, or the Greek, Adonis, all right? So, Idram goes in, and this is what it means. It says, who was and is Enram, the last of the chosen family of God? It says Enram is the word of art term that can be fully comprehended when one applies the ancient Moorish Arabic roots. It says in the concordance of the Quran by Hannah E. Kessi, it says Enram became the word Moor. Hmm. The ayn is silent, and the letter N is the terminal plural that becomes the moderate S. Therefore, ayn, silent, and M-R-N becomes M-R-S, moors. Now, remember, that symbolizes land. Remember, when you look up land, right. it says marshes, furs, water, moors. 
any gen, any is a general term for any land, but also means waters. Now, also the letter N is also from noon, meaning water, sea, ocean, adding to the meaning of the word in ram. So moors becomes more men, which means navigators or governors. Remember, the first governors and president of the United States were moors with the titles of bay. Uh-huh. Right? Now, in um, the book, Africa and the Discovery of America, says the black god of ancient America stated the following, that the first Americans were black. And this is by the scholarly Latin um, author C.C. C. McQuish. And he explains, he said, the strong possibility that black people were the first people in the Americas out of which later came the red Indian race, as they refer to them as, the second people. And it says the Native Americans also refer to the Lenape and the um, Ananazi as the old ones. All right. It is likely that we repeat the longer beautiful history was also a Negro, that America was also a Negro continent. And that the Alamis, which is Ultimas, which is the Ultima Empire of Mexico, are the remains of the Aboriginal Negro race out of which later developed what is known as the Red or Indian race. So the so-called Indian race, as they refer to the so-called lighter Indians nowadays, came from black, came from us, but they was the latter. They came later on. They was not the original. Mm-hmm. And they know this. Go and study many of the Native American culture. Um, many of the tribes understand this clearly, and know that this is true. Wow. Okay. So. Do they really um, speak of it much? Um, the Hopis um have. Okay. You know the Comanche, the Seneca, um, the Cherokee, the Choctaw. The Creek, the Mus- which is the Muskogee, uh, you know, those tribes have spoken. And if you go to any of those particular, uh, matter of fact, you can go to the Hana, uh, Hawana, um, the Ha, um, the Ha, the Ha, um, the Sapana. Um, if you go to the Sapana um, powwow. You would see that they that these are so called Native American tribes or Indian tribes, but they look like us. Mm-hmm. All right. Except All they right. have a culture. But they don't have a nationality. There's a difference. They have a culture, you know, but they don't have a nationality. Mm. Culture is part of nationality, but nationality is not necessarily part of culture. Right, um, Nicholas Leon proves that ancient the, um, that the um, ancient African presence was in America. In fact, he states that black people was the original people, the first people of Mexico. And the memory of them in the most ancient traditions induce us to believe that the Negroes were the first inhabitants of Mexico. Now, this is in his book, Historia General D. Mexico, which was written in 1909. You know? Wow. Yeah, so so this is is the realness of this. Right. You know? Now, if you go and do some research, it says... Speaking about the laws, because the term Muslim, like you said, refers to Moors and not so-called, you know, and not the so-called Arabs, you know, so-called Muslims in which that, you know, now do what they do, you know, set up corner stores and and you know what they do. They sell you poison, alcohol, liquor, et cetera, and cigarettes and pig feet. Exactly. And, and, um, you know. Right. In the name of the FRN. <laughs> exactly. In the name of Fiat. You know? 
Now, it says the family of nations up until 1914 was headed by the Osmanli Bay Empire, a.k.a. the Ultimate Empire, that extended to the American continent ruled by the aboriginal and sovereign people called the Lenape, or Lenape Lenape, that is, meaning we the people who established the United States of Monaco, also pronounced Morocco. All right, so the Moroccan Empire in the family of nations consisted of three league governments, erroneously called the Iroquois, the Algonquin, and the Suen, and the 17 independent republic states with thousands of countries, towns, and even village cities. So this means that these, um, this is why they say Delaware was the first state. But guess what? Delaware didn't become the um, um, first state until the late 1700s. After the election of George Washington. Wow. Right? So, the question is, these so-called territories was republic. These was independent republic territories, not necessarily states. But they had thousands of counties and towns and even village cities. And the phrase, family of nations, is codified and in the Black's Law Dictionary 7th edition is defined as a word of art form constructed to confuse and misguide the average unlearned reader. Now, the phrase family of nations is also mentioned in the Black's Law Dictionary 4th through the 6th edition, which defi- um, with the definition that the United States, it said, check this out. Now, it says, this term has several meanings. It may be merely, completely or wholly, the name of a sovereign occupying the position, all right, analog Logius of that of other sovereigns in the family of nations. So we know that the United States itself is a corporation. And remember, we said in the last, um, you know, radio talk that we was talking about, on Brother mm-hmm. L, that we got into how there was a de facto government and how they took it from the de jure. Well, we tell you who the de jure government actually is. Yeah. Right? The de jure government is the Ottoman slash Kushite slash Songhai Malian slash Omekian Amexum Morocco Moor government. Yes. I, I have I, I have a I have a shirt made uh with the uh, one says de jour with the Moor flag and the great seal of the Moor Moor nation. And the other side, non de jour, with the American flag and the uh the Phoenix bird or what they call the eagle on for non de jour. Mm. Most mm. people don't know what that means. No, they don't know that. And no and the uh I, if you, <laughs> the funniest thing about it, when I went there to get the maid, uh uh Abion man made the shirt. And he right. was just a smiling, you know, he really didn't know what he was really doing. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest part about it. So I look I looked for some Asiatic places to make them but the select they were all closed uh sold it. it was an Asiatic establishment, but they sold it out to the European establishment. Well, okay. So, okay. And that's why that's why I wind up there. And they made. They told me to come wow. back, come back again. I said, "Okay, I will." <laughs> I'm gonna have to see that shirt, brother. I'm gonna have to get me one. Yeah, yeah. This is this is uh, something I thought of, you know, uh, myself. Right. So you know, take, a, take a picture, take a, take a picture of it, so I can see what okay. you're working with, bro. Okay, I definitely will. I definitely will. No, right. So, so we know that the American government, under the authority of 1782, which is the present seal of the so-called American government, laid down by the um, Congressional or the Continental Congress, right? Which is the Congress of which is the American Congress, 
you know, which was assembled, you know, or what became known as the Congress of the United States, not to be confused with the unconstitutional uh, Republican Democratic Party Committee United States um, Congress, I, um, a.k.a. the Senate and the House Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. Uh, we know that they are, once again, the de facto, not the de jure mm-hmm. government, which is us. That's why our shield is on that dollar bill. So it became the Aboriginal, original, sovereign United States of America at that time. So between 1782 and 1787, the preamble citizens and the citizens in compliance with the family of nations ordained and established in accordance with the law of nations, the Constitution, for the United States of America. Uh-huh. For that time until now, the preamble and the constitutional um, America has been and is complete and perfect member of the family of nations. That's what we taught ourselves into. Now, it says at the end of World War I in 1914, the family of nations was dropped from public sight. However, it still exists and actually by law and truth is in full effect. The so-called Western nations under the control of the masterful uh, Maluk administration from 1914 to 1948 has implemented the control of the public in this modern-day world. Now, the Mameluk, now look up the word Mameluk, M-A-M-L-U-K-S, the Administrative Federal Government of and the United States of America under the authority of 1934 through 35, the Great Seal of the so-called America, which is the American Great Seal, Mm -hmm. has esoterically and awfully constructed a mirror United States of an image of our government, American government. This duplicate United States government was publicly completed with the creation of the United Nations. In other words, we had the League of Nations, and that was changed to the United Nations. So keep in mind that the first inhabitants of America, you know what I'm saying, or what is called of the United States of America, was in existence prior to 1782, pursuant to the law of nations, and that the administrative federal great seal of the United States government between 1934 through 38 created the United Nations in 1947-48. Now, that means that there's two United States in North America, all right? And I call it the American government, and the other one is the United States government, which was, again, American government is de jure, the true government, while the United States government is the de facto. All mm-hmm. right? There must be citizens belonging to two or both governments. That is to say, two different types of citizens. The one with the lowercase c is the citizen of the United States, de facto government. The capital C all right, or members of the American government or the preamble, we the people, all right? Now, we know that the 14th Amendment is um, is the subject to another jurisdiction, all right? The Constitutional Citizens right. of the United States of America and the Administrative United States, respectively. Now, originally, the preamble citizens of the American government, you know what I'm saying, um, and remember, we said the phrase, we the people, translated to many Lenape, all right? Which means the word Lenape means actually uh, was the name um, in which we get the word nappy head from, or sparrow-headed people. In other words, right. this is why you have a sister, you know, uh, that looked like Wesley Snipes. Um, pardon, pardon me. But she do. Uh, okay. Cheryl Underwood, you're like a female Wesley Snipes, can get on national TV and say the dumb shit that she has said that who want nappy hair? <laughs> she look like Wesley Snipes. <laughs> yeah. You know Wesley Snipes. Damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, for those, now we have the spiral. 
or spiral head, you know, or hair, which is nappy. But the word spiritual comes from the word spiral or spiral. So the word Lenape also comes from the old men or the original men, the grandfathers. All right? That's what it means. Um, it refers to the Lenapes also as the old ones, which is the return of the ancient ones. Right? The Ananazi or the Washita, the Choctaw. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem is that even though they are our brethren, they too have a lot to account for because of their speaking with a forked tongue concerning the true accounts of what occurred in ancient North America. Yeah. All right. So around 15,000 to 13,000 years ago, the Moorish Hazanazi Folsom people established the mound building civilization, a.k.a. the Mississippian culture. Now we know that Prophet Nobudra Ali said that um, before the Europeans came, the Moors lived all up and down the Mississippi. That is that is within the oral um, traditions and statements of Prophet Nobudra Ali. All right, the Lenape Indian Moors, as they referred to as, because they was referred to as Indians, but it actually was Moors, and the Indo-European Moors, all right, um, having fought against the British, you know what I'm saying, so-called Moors, in the Revolutionary War, in the War of Independence, all right, both called the American Revolution, and having won with the assistance of great, and, um, you know, they, they won with the assistance of, you know, the Caucasian, you know, the so-called Europeans, decide, um, decided in accordance with the Lenape Monaco Constitution of the Civilized Nations, a.k.a. the Great Law of Peace, that no slavery shall exist in the United in um in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. It says today, it says therefore today, a preamble citizen of the United States is an individual who declares, proclaims, records, and implements their constitutional rights and privileges of excuse me and pledges their allegiance to the original national flag of the American government in the family of nations. All right. It says a preamble citizen has constitutional guaranteed rights and privileges and immunities in accordance with the domestic common law of the laws of the so-called United States. These rights and priorities are embodied within our fundamental principles in both the national general government and the sovereign Republican state um, government. The preamble citizen does not depend on any attachments adjustments or amendments. We only consciously, properly, and lawfully claim our preamble citizenship and they becomes the criteria of natural born citizens of the greatest nation on this planet, i.e. America, which belongs to the family of nations. Now of course we see, you know, ever since nineteen thirty three with the House Joint Resolution one ninety two, we see that Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who ended up sitting in the seat for 12 years, which is far beyond um, the limitations on which that, um, you know, the Constitution at that time did not limit, you know, like they did now, two sessions or, you know, an eight-year term, you know what I'm saying, for a president. They didn't do that during that time period. After he did right. his 12 years, that's when they decided to um, knock that down to only two terms. But right. the thing is, is that while he was in there for 12 years, he was able to um, destroy the government since that gold was no longer of substance, um, was no longer being back, you know, no longer back this fiat note, as we now refer to it as this money. Right. right? Nothing of substance. So with that destruction, what we find out is that based on the um, House Joint Resolution, when you read it, you'll find out that is paper for paper now, all right? Right. So the country been been bankrupt, all right? And that was the um, final straw of the bankruptcy. And basically, we turned everything over to the Federal Reserve Bank, which that was the plan the whole time in that regard, you know? 
Yeah. All right, so, um, anything you want to build on, Brother L? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I was uh, talking to a brother about the bankruptcy. He said that uh, he asked me how many times did the, the United States file for bankruptcy, and he mm-hmm. was telling me that seven times. And he said, I tried to explain to him that I said, well, seven times, that don't mean that they paid their, paid the debt up seven times. That means they <laughs> right. had renewed it every, it, uh, it, right. uh, they had to renew it. Like the, the civil rights bill, yeah. they renew the civil rights bill every yeah. 25 years. Because the bill, that's, a, exactly. that's what it is, a bill. The same thing exactly. with the bankruptcy and the and, national debt. And, and as far as I know, as far as I know, with a bill, somebody had to pay the bitch. Yeah. Somebody had to pay it. Somebody. Yeah. You know, and uh, the, uh, what I was telling him, I said, no, that, that that doesn't mean that they had, uh, the United States had paid them seven times, and then they had, again, they had to file bankruptcy again seven times. No, that's not what that means, that meant. And I tried to explain to him. I said, no, they had to renew that. I said, they can never repay it because when they loan, I gave an example. Uh, uh, the United States asked the Federal Reserve for maybe a uh, uh, billion dollars. So they uh, spend maybe about $1,000 to have them, a billion dollars printed. But, and what interest? They charge you with interest. Now, when they, uh, uh, but the interest is never printed. On those ten billion dollars, ten billion dollar, or a billion dollars, whatever. So how are you going to pay it back? You can't. And that's the truth of the matter. Yes. Interest uh, charge you interest on on something they didn't gave you in the first place. Hmm. You know, it, it, it's it's wild. <laughs> And China is now the largest owner of our day. Yeah. So they the creditor. Yes. Yeah. But they think they the creditor. <laughs> <laughs> their, their, their day is coming too. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, that's why you see so many Chinese over here in the universities. And, and I said, I've never seen so many Chinese in this country in my life. And uh, uh, they live in the, the most, uh, uh, they call uh, uh, expensive, I call them expensive neighborhoods uh, in the city, you know. But, well, they just come over here, you know. They just come and just live and get uh, privileges and benefits that a lot of us can get and been over here all our lives, paid so-called taxes. And and whatever you know, served in the military, whatever you know. But why? Why? Because we keep on telling people that we are colors. So therefore, you know, uh, they come over here. They know who they are. They come over here, and plus, look at this country, this, this corporation. I, I say, uh, is in debt to their country. Uh, I think you, I think you said it. I think uh, uh, about a week ago said they were in seventeen billion dollars. And debt, or maybe more, yeah, 70, in China. Yeah, seventy billion. Right, and which that actually close to seven hundred um, billion. Hmm. Hmm. So that's why you I, I, I had to explain to them. That's why you see so many Chinese over here. That's why you see them coming over here to the universities and colleges and whatnot. You know, the, hey, you know, come over here. They can get. Uh, Get food for cheap or for nothing at all, you know. Right. Things about like, things of that nature, but uh, 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 <laughs> it's something. It sure is. Uh, and once again, um, tell, tell me what the um, Chinese lady told you. Yes, uh, I have talked to one. Uh, I want to see my aunt. And there was a Chinese nurse in there. And I asked her, hey, how you doing? I said, how you doing? You know, she, she asked me my name. I said, my name is uh, Richard Ringel. 
And she says, oh, what does that mean? I told her it means God pleasantly moving upon the earth. She said, what kind of name is that? And I said, it's um, a more Asiatic Moorish name. And she said, oh, okay. And I asked her what her name. I said, her name is Lili. And I asked, we got to talking, you know, and I said, it, uh, and I said, right, let me ask you something. I said, what do you, when you sign documents and applications and things like that, what do you put like far as, race or nationality uh do you put yellow and then she frowned she said she said no i don't put that down there we don't do that she said she i know some people call us yellow people but that's not who we are the people are not colors you know that's mm. what she said mm. people are not colors well. Um, I think that was enough right there, Brother L. We're going to come back after this commercial break. All right. <laughs> First of all, on the radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Get on into some of that more consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, more information on Wednesday. Wednesday is the clock now the hottest day of the week. Machine and lovers in time hold important. The most prominent parts of voices for instruments. Earth and state of human concept and existence. And then definitely parts of two, parts of team or this. Just to regulate the brain of our specific thing that we make so bad in the natural appearance of this. How much they need to let your man insist of sound to make a thing that your thoughts can get to. Machine and lovers in time hold important. The most prominent parts of voices for instruments. Playtime is over. Oh, yeah. So let's get back to the 13th Amendment here of the Constitution of the United States of America. Um, preamble in the um, Article 1 through 7, which of course is an inferior appendage thereof and does not in any way supersede the, um, the de jure government, which is Continental Congress, the Republican or formal government, nor does it in any thing to do actually with the preamble of the natural born um, citizens or natural born inhabitants of the Americans is an artificial and constructed amendment quasi outlawing slavery or indigenous servitude or does it really do that because most people Hmm. when they read the 13th amendment only recognize that one can be freed into slavery or involuntary servitude for the punishment of a crime. 
So they can only be forced, excuse me, into slavery or involuntary servitude for the punishment of a crime. However, one can voluntarily make themselves and their offspring slaves by ways of common law contracts. And actually, beyond common law contracts, um, commercial contracts, in this regard, at Morality and Maritime, which is the, actually the birth certificate. And that's what we talked about um, before. Right. You know? Um, so it says that the 13th Amendment sets up the con- um, conditions for 14th Amendment citizens and the legally and awfully allow for voluntary subjugation of the 14th Amendment. Right. The 14th Amendment citizenship is predicated on the word of part term subjects to the jurisdiction. So you have to, that's why we tell you that you have to state jurisdiction. Your nationality deals with your status and your jurisdiction. The mm-hmm. wrong venue is if you're in an admiralty court and you're talking about the Constitution. That's the wrong venue. You have to turn the court into a constitutional um, common law court. And you do that by mm-hmm. way of sending in your notice of restricted appearance, stating that you're not a 14th Amendment citizen, that you do not consent to the proceedings, that you're only there under threat or arrest and coercion, which is TDC. Um, if you are kidnapped, you know, um, criminally, if you go to type um, United States Code 18, it tells you um, how much for criminal activity as far as kidnapping is, um, is, is amounted to. You can also put that there. Um, you can ask for the delegation of authority by... Um, the judge, also by way of the DA, particularly the prosecutor, because mm-hmm. that's actually who you're battling, not the judge. You're battling the prosecutor. Even though sometimes the prosecutor don't say shit, the judge jumps in and act like he's down um, rolling on the side of the damn prosecutor, and that ain't just supposed to happen like that. The right. judge is supposed to be neutral. He's supposed to be like the administrator. He's supposed to be, you know, he's bankrupt. He's a bankrupt administrator, so his whole goal is to get some damn money because that goes on his Form 24 you know what I'm saying? Um, 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 well, it goes on the prosecutor form 24. It goes on the judge 801K, <laughs> all right, which is um, like the 401K that you get, but the judge got an 801, mm. all right? So um, it's like a commission that goes to him for how many niggas he puts in jail. Mm. And the prosecutor can write off at the end of the year on his form 24 that you ain't give him no damn money. It was a gift. <laughs> so he gets, it's just like a oh, 1099 OID in a sense. He gets all that money back. Or he gets all the money, you know, back, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the year, however he, um, he does it. All right. So all of, this, all of these are all based on the fact of them utilizing these bonds, which is the word short for bondage, in which that they end up putting us in, you know, um, using this 14th Amendment, you know, neither voluntary slavery nor voluntary servitude shall exist within the United States. That's why the 13th Amendment omits that term. They say that, what, voluntary Slavery or involuntary servitude for the punishment of a crime. You can be forced into that. Now, what is a crime? Huh. A crime based on Sheriff versus Cullis, it must be damaged property and it must be an injured party. Yeah. If there's no injured party or damaged property, then it's not a crime. Seatbelt violation is not a damn crime. Running through a toll is not a crime. Speeding without harming anyone is not a crime. All right? Um, bypassing the red light that's just damn sitting there too damn long and ain't no traffic. That's not a crime. Having no license, no insurance, no um, registration, those are not crimes. <coughs> mm-hmm. Sorry. Exactly. Those are referred to in law as infractions. But it's not a law. It's not a crime. All right. I should say it's not based on um, an actual law. Those are statute, codes, rules, regulations, ordinances. In other words, if you break a law, you know what I'm saying, which they which is not a law, it's colorable law. It's uh-huh. um what's a better word for colorable law? We would say it's illegal. It deals with legality. Uh-huh. But it's not lawful. 
Mm-hmm. They want those things in place because it deals with control over you. And they have control over you, especially now when they go into this police state type of atmosphere. And you don't believe the police state? Take your ass to New York and you see that shit. Go to Brooklyn. Go to Harlem. You won't see that shit in the white neighborhoods, but goddamn, you'll see that shit in our neighborhoods. Uh Uh-huh. Exactly. All right. My mom lives in Queens. I got the final police now. (laughs) You won't have to damn do that shit downtown Brooklyn. Them motherfuckers (laughs) like two and four to six on every damn block. And that's the same way as in Harlem. Mm-hmm. Now, I could have sworn that the fucking bombing took place downtown Manhattan. <laughs> in the white area. That's where the planes came in at. The shit didn't come in in fucking Harlem. She didn't come down to downtown Brooklyn off of Flatbush. Mm-hmm. Over Fulton and Flatbush. She didn't come down down there. Ain't no fucking damn towers fell, fell downtown Brooklyn. No damn towers fell in Harlem. Wow. All right. So this is what we're talking about. And so they're there in order to build on their capital. They want to institute these goddamn concentration camps, detention centers, slash debt prisons, whatever you want to refer to them as. This is what they're gearing up for, working towards. Now, if Obama don't stop them trying to get in Syria and trying to bomb them, talking about they got some damn Sinai, uh, um, some type of damn um, um, gas that they uh-huh. damn spray. Look, we get sprayed on every fucking day over here in the United States. You know what I'm saying? Of a so-called America. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the United, you know, we can't spray it over here every damn day with goddamn chemtrails. You better be worrying about these goddamn chemtrails being sprayed on us over here. Exactly. Funny goddamn vast, mass, mass vaccinations. Instead of damn uh-huh. going and damn truck fucking with damn someone else. Off there across the damn water some damn way. Now, you know, the whole plan is the damn, they want to institute um, that damn pipeline through there, which that they started back in the damn early 90s with George Bush. Mm-hmm. All right? That's, that was the whole thing with um, Kuwait, Iran, Iraq. You know what I'm saying? Afghanistan. You know, all of that. They want all of that. And now Syria. They also wanted Pakistan. Mm-hmm. All right. They want to start going into um, Africa, um, fucking around with Sudan and different other countries over there. Because that's part of the AFRICOM. They want oil. This is what this whole shit is about. That's all. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. He get ready. They damn trying to get ready to damn gear up World War Three. China and um, China and damn Russia already told the United States, yo, don't be fucking with Syria. Already told them that. I say, look, don't mess with them. Matter of fact, um, British, the Britons were so scared. They said, fuck it, we ain't mess, we ain't messing with you. We ain't, um, not, um, we bowing out. The United they told the United States, nah, we ain't fucking with China and um, Russia, yo. We we bowing out. They told us not to fuck with on um, Syria, we ain't fucking with them. So the United States trying to go in on this shit alone and don't care if they damn trigger World War Three doing this shit. This is the reason why um people already knew that this shit was coming and this shit was already prophesized by many people when they put Obama in um, in office. It was already talking about the fact. That he could be possibly an antichrist, in which that will lead us into World War Three. Yep. Now you go back and check any of these Europeans. This is all they were saying, and he's getting ready to try to prove them right with this bullshit. Huh. I'm sorry if I'm talking yeah. about your president, but goddamn, some things in which that might need to be said. Some. Right. 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 We're trying to work with Man, I'm not saying that, um, I ain't saying that he's the Antichrist, but I am saying that there's some things in which that is going on in which that could lead towards World War Three, and uh, we might not need to be doing that shit. All right? 
So um, that's my spill for the night. Um, Brother L, you got anything to say before we go? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, the, the, the Obama, yes, he's working hard with Congress, got trying to get that passed so they can go over there and make their preemptive strikes, you know. But uh, like you said, Russia and China told him, hey, you're going to be going over there messing around, man. You know, hey, you go over there, get on their head, we got to get on yours. And I guess he probably told him, I said, now you know what, he's still over there $17 billion and some. Now, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you ain't in no position. Talking about telling us what you're going to do. Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, but... Uh, uh, yep, yeah, uh, I was uh, what you were saying earlier uh, about uh, what I mean. It was about uh, oh, I can't think of it. Uh, Tip my tongue. Uh, mm, I can't think of it. <laughs> uh, it was a, oh, okay. It was dealing with the uh, the Constitution uh, all the way to the. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1789, during that period, uh, I wish a lot of people were really uh, listen. I hope that a lot of people really listen in on what was said and what was said by you, what was said by myself uh, right. about that, dealing with uh, the amendments. Uh, that after the Tenth Amendment, mm-hmm. there are no more real amendments. You know, they, they, right. I mean, they all they are fraudulent. And especially when it comes to the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment and the 16th Amendment, it's supposed to be the so-called tax. Well, there's no money. Right. Where's your taxes? You know, exactly. how they tax you where there's no money? Uh, 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 mm-hmm. The 19th Amendment, the women's right to vote, well, it, 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 it's a make-believe. It's a, a, a curtain to pull wool, pull over your eyes to keep you from saying that you're a slave. Right. So, so that's 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 all I want to get back at, and hopefully uh, we'll be back here Friday night. So, same time, right. same well, station. Let me say this because we got two things to say. I want to read um, Andrea um, information she put in the chat room that the Chinese migrated to the United States with the financial backing of their country. First of all, in order to leave the country, they must first deposit in a government-controlled saving account a large sum of money, which acts like a bond to ensure their eventual return to the country. They are then able to get financial backing from their government to help them start businesses once they reach the United States. This helps to ensure their financial independence when they migrate. They can Mm -hmm. then bring over family members who they can afford to support financially and bankroll new startup businesses for their family members. That is how they do it. Mm. Thank you, Andrew. I had to read that from the chat room. Um, And this correlates also to the, to the phrase subject to, all right, you go to the 14th amendment, remember it says subject to the jurisdiction. And you said that you have personal jurisdiction. When they ask you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? You say emphatically, no. You do not understand the charges because, number one, there's no injured party. There's no um, no damaged property. So if, there's no, if that's the case, then there's no crime. So what the fuck I'm doing here? Right. Now, the phrase subject to comes from the Latin word servio or servus, meaning to be a slave or to be mortgaged. Huh. All right. Ooh. Once again, the phrase subject to as we read in the 14th Amendment, comes from the Latin term servio or service, meaning to be a slave or to be mortgage. Now, the word mortgage means dead pledge or black pledge. Now, also in the lawyer's Latin, um, the um, idiomatic word, the idiomatic word of art terms subject to the jurisdiction of another means negro. That's what it means. And this is the reason why if you go to any given day in the damn courtroom, all up and down and throughout the whole goddamn so-called United States, you will see over 95% of people in there 
the Moors, i.e. Mm. black, colored, African American, whatever term you want to use, that's us up in that damn courtroom throughout the whole damn state. Mm-hmm. All right? Throughout the whole damn union states, I should say. So, um, you know, and hell, even in the white areas, you know, so-called white or Albion areas, um, you know, shit, they'll, shit, if you coming through, they'll, they'll damn, um, do, that's the whole thing about racial profiling is damn looking for your ass so they can fund their system, their municipalities to keep them going. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you pay for their daughter's collar, collar bonds and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So even in so-called white areas, you're going to see damn at least 70% of the damn courtroom filled with us. And we don't even damn live in the damn area. Damn, just be searching for your ass. <laughs> Hoping you do come through. Mm-hmm. Now you think I'm bullshitting? Look up the statistics. <laughs> go to right, one of the go read, uh, right, read the um, New Dem Crow um, by Sister Alexander. All right, go and read Sister um, um, what's her name, Michelle Ab- um, Alexander, her book, The New Jim Crow. Go and read her book. Go and watch Hidden Colors Part 2. All right? So, um, we're going to leave you all with that. And um, and we say that we are up out of here, Brother L. Brother all right. L. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it.